وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما قل وكفى خير مما كفر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت أيها المسلمون عباد الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن من أفضل أيامكم يوم الجمعة فأكثروا فيه من الصلاة علي فإن صلاتكم معروضة علي قالوا كيف تعرض صلاتنا يا رسول الله كيف تعرض صلاتنا عليك وقد أرنت أي وقد بليت قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله حرم على الأرض أن تأكل أجساد الأنبياء أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our, of our own selves and from the wickedness of our own deeds and actions. Whomsoever Allah guides is guided, whomsoever Allah leaves unguided, there is none that can guide. I testify openly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have no part and no associate, never ever resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has the ultimate power ultimate wisdom, ultimate knowledge, whatever he intends, he will say be and it is. Kun fayakun. Created Adam without a father and a mother. Jesus, Isa, without a father. And he created me and you from a mother and a father. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whatever he wants. And we have to be asked during the Qiyamah what we do during our lifetime. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in need for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though we don't follow His guidance, even though we don't please Him all the time, but we are in desperate need for the mercy and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even non-believers, they need for the mercy and the guidance of Allah. And you know, when they are on the ship, on the boat, and the wind starts to move, and they know their end has come, what they say? Oh God, Ya Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, Muslim and Islam spread all over the globe. Not by the sword, not by convincing people by power, but by good behavior, good manners. The Sahaba, the Tabi'in, Tabi'i Tabi'in, and all the generations until now, Islam is spread all over by good manners, good behavior, good conduct. How to deal with people? A deal with Muamala. How to deal with people? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam كان خلقه القرآن He was a walking Quran when Aisha was asked about the behavior and the khuluq and the manas of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was a walking Quran كان خلقه القرآن And Allah described him in Surah 
نون وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم في أرلي فيرلي you are in the perfect way of behavior conduct manners أخلاق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the highest level and if you look at our ibadat examine and look at all the ibadat we do all the worship we do if you look at the salah what the purpose of the salah إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر. فيرلي صلاة stops us you from indecency, from shameful acts. The purpose of the salah to get you closer to Allah and to stop you from doing evil acts. What the purpose of a soul? لعلكم تتقون to gain تقوى. But Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said. من لم يدع أو نزور والعمل به فلا حاجة لله أن يدع طعامه وشرابه. If the one does not stop from talking falsehood, then there is no need for him when he fasting to leave his food and his drink. What's the purpose if you fast and you backbite and you slander? This is against the purpose of fasting as the god khud min awalihim sadaqatan tutahkiruhum wa tuzakkihim biha take from their wealth something so that you can clean them purify them from what from jealousy from hatred when you give the poor the poor is going to love you if the ummah give all of them give their zakah you will never find any poor in any country but some people have billionaires, billions. Some people have millions. But when you don't give your zakah, then what is going on? You find hunger and starvation in some Muslim countries. The same thing, you find some people are dying of overeating. And some people are dying of starvation. Every ibadah, the purpose of the ibadah, to clean you. To get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have good manners. <laughs> the manners is not sometime and, and sometime we can't do, we don't have. We, if we don't lie, we don't lie all the time. Not here, not in Mecca, all the time, in every place, wherever. How to deal with other people? We have to deal equally with justice, with behavior, with our neighbors, with our parents, with our wives, husbands, children, everybody. So that people, when they look at you, they say you are a Muslim. Not because of your dress code, not because of your hijab, not because, even though it's very important, but your behavior, your manners. When you live in a neighborhood, you become an example. If you find anything lost, you will return it. When you talk with the people, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, al kalima tayyiba sadaqa. The good word is sadaqa, is charity. If you can't talk, tabassumuka fiwa ki akhika sadaqa. Even to smile at the face of your brother is a charity, is sadaqa. So my dear brother, there is a lot of ways to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the manas, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُطْغَى إِذَا صَلُحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ There is a piece of flesh, the heart. This piece of flesh, very small. If it's sound, the rest of the body is going to be sound and good. But if it's corrupted, then the rest of the limbs are going to be corrupted. Because the heart is the king of the body. If the king is sick, all the limbs, they're gonna follow him. And this is exactly what happened. When you find a sick heart, then a person can steal. The hand has no control. The tongue can but bite and lie because the, 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 the manager, because the king is sick. The foot will go to the crack house. All these negative things, the person will commit because the king is sick. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, من يضمن لي ما بين لحيه وما بين فخذه أضمن له الجنة. If you guarantee your private parts and your tongue, I will guarantee you a jannah, a paradise. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم does not 
not speak from his own desires. He speak from revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you guard your tongue, my dear brother, the tongue is the fastest organ in our body. If you walk from here, five miles, you have problems with your knees, your foot, your back. But if you talk two, three hours, you don't even feel nothing. The tongue is very fast. And a lot of people, you can pronounce what I'm doing, people will, throw, will be thrown in the hellfire as a result of what the tongue brings to them. So my dear brothers, you have to be very careful. The manners are vitally important. Vitally important. Because we deal with the people. We deal early morning with our children going to school, our wives, our husband, our neighbors, co-workers. All these people, we need to show them the adab of an Islam, the manners of an Islam, how the Muslims behave. When I be in business, I shouldn't cheat. People will trust me. If they have something, they come and say, please, can you keep this for me? I'm, I'm going to go for some time. Keep it for me. Have 10,000. Because you're Muslim, and I know you don't steal. This is what we need. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he set the best example, and the companions after him, they followed his footsteps, and they did everything that in their ability to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with good manners and good behavior. The Sahab of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they recite the Quran all the time, and we recite the same Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَلِ النَّاسِ Brothers who have nap, please if you sleep, wake up. Brothers, those who are sleeping, wake them up. I'm not here, came here to, to make you sleep. I make you to wake up. Wake these brothers, please. If you sleep, wake up. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَلِ النَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this ayat, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَلِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ once upon a time, Imam Zain al-Abidin uh, from the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam scholar, well known, good behavior, good manners once upon a time, the person, the young boy who was serving him he was throwing water, bringing water for him for his wudu and while he was bringing water the jug, the container of the water, the ibrit, fall down and hit the foot of the Imam Zain al-Abideen, held him and the jug broke down, broke off. And Zain al-Abideen was so angry and he looked at the boy like this with anger. And before he has, before he has to say anywhere, he didn't say anywhere, but the boy said to him, well, kaabineen al -ghayza. Those who control their anger. Look how these people follow the Quran. What did he say? He said to him, al kadimin al -ghayza. Those who control their anger. And then al Abidin looked down and, and said, Kazam to I have controlled my anger. Then the ayah doesn't stop there. Wal Afin al Nas. Those who forgiving people. And he said, I forgive you for the sake of Allah. Sometimes you control your anger, you forgive, but it's still something in your heart. And he said to him, the end of the ayah, Wallahu yuhibbun muhsineen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who do good. And he said to him, Anta hurrun lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are free for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you have the manners of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-akhlaq. My dear brothers, are very important, and especially in this time, people can look at us in a way that is not good. People can say words, but you have to have control. You have to control your anger. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when a man came to him seeking his advice, what he said to him? He didn't give him a long lecture. He said to him, لا تغضب, لا تغضب. Imagine, you came for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who received revelation does not give you advice from his own mind. 
Bize tuhim la tahtab. Do not become angry. Do not become angry. Do not become angry. And no anger is a problem for a lot of things. Sometimes Allah tests us with anger so that we can see our behavior, our manners. It doesn't mean we don't, we don't have to be, get angry. Yes, we do get angry sometimes, but you have to control your anger. And if you don't control your anger, just go to Rakaz Island. If you be in Rakaz Island, if you have, uh, if you ever visit Rakaz Island, the prison here or up state, you see people in jail because of five minutes or three minutes of anger. Maybe he want to park his car. He was waiting for the spot, and somebody come behind and put his car in. Now he's changed where? Took his hand, gun or his hand and hit that person and the person dies. And as a result of two or three minutes of anger, you could go and look for another space. Now you go for lifetime, for 25 years. Because you did not control your anger. Because you don't look at your manners. Now you go there. Outside you can eat anything you want. You want to eat pizza, you want to eat you want to eat whatever, over there you eat what they give it to you. Eat it or leave it. Here you can stay all the time in the bathroom to have shower. Over there they tell you two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. If you didn't finish it doesn't matter. They pull you out. You lost your liberty, your freedom because you did not control your anger. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful and look. One of the things at Tawabah, to be humble, to be humble, this is from the manners of Islam. To, to be humble to your fellow Muslims, to your family members, to the non-Muslim outside. Show them Islam, you are very humble people. We don't look above the people. The Prophet وسلم, people come from all over just to see him. They come from Rome, they come from Persia to see Muhammad وسلم, when they come. And they look at the Prophet ﷺ. He was among his companions, not in a high chair, not in a throne. And they say, who amongst you was Muhammad? Who is amongst you Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He he doesn't have something special. He doesn't wear gold or silver on his body so that to identify him. He just look at look the same way the other companions do. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's the best example. In some Muslim countries, some scholars, when they come, people almost bow down to come and kiss their hands. This is not the way of Islam. Islam make a person have dignity. We only make record for Allah. We only make tribute for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't bow for nobody. That's why even the Ratul Janazah, when we make it, we don't make tribute, we don't make record. Because the body in front of us, Allah and His Messenger, they want to teach us that even this is death in front of you, we don't even make any sign of bowing or prostration, but we stand still and straight only for Salah, only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers, we have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves, this from the manners of Islam. One surgeon, hard surgeon in America here, they said when he comes to the masjid, some masjid you find the shoes all over. Sometimes people when they enter the masjid, everybody takes his shoes and all over. Not organized. And they said this hard surgeon, the hard surgeon, very famous. When he comes, he takes all the shoes and put them, organize them and put them on the shelf. All the time. When they see him coming, he comes all the time late because he stay and put them. Humble himself. Imam Sha'rawi. If you know Imam Sha'rawi from Egypt, Sheikh Sha'rawi, Rahimahullah, he, was a lot, he have a lot of lectures. He have the seer of the Quran, a lot of halaqat. This Sheikh, sometimes when he gives something, he gives so sweet talk. People come and, so, and praise him and say something good about him. And he said, sometimes as a human being, I look at myself like that above a little bit. Or Shaitan come to me. You know what, what he used to do? He said, to put myself down, to humble myself, what he said I used to do? He said, after people go, after they leave the masjid, I stay alone, and I go to the bathroom to clean them, to humble myself. To show them that, you know, I'm nobody, I'm just a human being alive with me. 
little bit knowledge. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful. If you are handsome, if you are pretty, and you are arrogant, and you are not humble, there is somebody all the time prettier than you and humble. If you are wealthy, and you are not, you are arrogant, there is somebody who has more wealth than you and humble. If you think you are a big deal, there is somebody who is a real deal and humble than you. All the time humble yourself. Humble yourself and think about the grave. Think about the grave. Think when they put you there and you cannot even talk, you cannot even walk. When people watch your body, you can't tell them how to call water. You can't tell them, don't cover my body. Your aura is being exposed. Your body is going to be exposed. Later on, in three days, nobody want to come next to you. Your teeth will fall down. Your hair will drop down. Your body is open. Everything is going to be changed. Whatever is going to benefit you, your deeds. If they put deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to open a garden from, the, from paradise for you. And if it's bad, from the hellfire. So my dear brothers, we have to be very careful. Watch our manners. Watch our words. Words. Before you say a word, think about it. Think. The tongue is very fast. Therefore, we have to think before we say a word. We have two ears and one tongue so that we can listen more than we talk. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له My dear brothers, we're talking about good manners Something We try to avoid the bad manners also We have to avoid it We have to avoid it Because otherwise all our good deeds will be zero on the Do you know the hadith of the Muflis, the one the bankrupt, the one who did a lot of good deeds. But on the he has nothing because the person whom he backbited, whom he slandered, whom he beat, or whom he did something wrong to him, they will take all his good deeds. And later on, when he has nothing, they will take their bad deeds and give them to him and will be thrown in the hellfire. Do you know this hadith? Yuta bi unasim, a'maluhum ka jibali tihama, ij'ala Allah haba'a manthura. Do you know this hadith? This is very scary hadith. Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yom al-Qiyam, when some people will be brought to Allah in front of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, their teeth white and huge, like the mountains of tihama in al-Hijaz. But Allah make it vain, no value, zero. Why? لكنهم إذا خلوا بمحارم الله انتهبوها When they are alone, they violate Allah right When they are alone, they do something wrong When they are in front of the people, they are so righteous But when they are alone, they go to this kind of all the social media And they go to certain places, they shouldn't have come there So my dear brothers, we have to be all the time even when we teach the people. Look at the, at the end of the arrogant people. What about what happened to Fir'aun? What happened to Namrud? What happened to all these people? Look at the history from Adam والسلام, until now from Muhammad والسلام, Look at the arrogant people, what happened to them? Allah will destroy them. You arrogant? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا تحسبن الله غافل عما يعبد الظالمون. إنما يؤخرهم ليوم تشخص فيه الأبصار مخضعين مخضعين رؤوسهم لا يرتد إليه طرفهم وأفئدتهم هواء وأنذر الناس يوم يأتيهم العذاب فيقول الذين ظلموا ربنا أخرنا إلى أجل قريب نجب دعوتك ونتبع الرسل أو لم تكونوا أقسمتم من قبل ما لكم من زوال My dear brothers the engineer who made the Titanic ship, he made the Titanic ship, a huge ship, great ship, strong ship. But when you are arrogant, when you are not, you 
have no good manners, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do for you? He was asked, how this ship, how this ship, how, how the safety of this, of this ship, how safety it is? It is safe with arrogance, without manners. He said, it is so safe to such a degree, even the God himself cannot sink it. Subhanallah. And the first trip, the first trip, less than one year, sank down in the ocean. You arrogant, you have no manners, don't, don't play with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The president who used to be the president of Brazil, his name, Tecrando Ives. He said, if I get half a million votes, if I get high 500,000 votes, I will be the president. Even if God doesn't want that. Arrogant. I'm sure he gets five thousands, five five hundred thousand, half a million votes. And tomorrow he was ready to become a president. But before tomorrow, before next day, Allah called him back, Allah took his soul. Don't play. Arrogance and bad manners can take you to bad conclusion. Can take you away from the fault of Islam. There was a king of Khorasan, of Hassan, Hassan, during the time of Umar ibn Khattab. His name, uh, I will get his name now. This man, king, he heard about Islam, and he came, his, his last name, Ibn Al-Ayham, Ibn Al-Ayham, his last name. He came all the with his people, with gold and silver, to Umar ibn al-Khattab, and he said, I want to become Muslim. Welcome, Umar ibn al-Khattab told him, come to the fold of Islam. The doors are open for anybody. Islam is not just for certain race, it's Islam for every human being. And he came, took shahada, and he went to make tawaf around the Kaaba. While he was making tawaf on the Kaaba, around the Kaaba, a, a, a man, regular man, from the poor man of the of the of the of the, of the, the Muslim, poor man, have no power. While he was making tawaf, by accident, he stepped on his garment, on his clothing. What he did? He slapped him right on his face and broke his nose. <coughs> Arrogant. Islam, Muslim are Sawasia, equal. There is no superiority of any race over another race. People are equal in the sight of Allah. And he came, this man came to Umar al Khattab and he called him. He said to him, You have to please him, you have to make a deal with him. He said to him, But I'm a king. And it's from the regular people. Said Islam sao bainakuma. Islam make you equal. There is no such king or regular person. People are equal in the sight of Allah. The best one of them in the sight of Allah, the one who have taqwa. But I'm a king. Said if you don't do that, if you don't please him, you have to break your nose. There's no job. And the one said, Give me a little bit time. And he went, my time, he ran with his people to his place, and he left Islam, and he died as a Muslim. Why? Because you arrogant. No manners, because you don't want to humble yourself. Let us, brothers and sisters, humble ourselves. Let us when we teach the people. When, I have, we have, when we have a little bit knowledge, and we want to spread Islam, let us humble ourselves. Let us be nice. Let us work like Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam al Imam Abu Hanif, Imam Malik, and those who were before them, like the Sahaba. Humble yourself. No matter how, how much, how knowledge you have, still somebody has more knowledge than you. No matter how you recite the Quran, somebody recites the Quran better than you. No matter how much money you have, still somebody has more than you. Humble yourself. A, fr a brother from Bangladesh, he comes to the haram every year, he comes to the haram, have a long beer, 
And you know most of the people who clean the haram in Mecca and Medina, the brothers from Bangladesh and Pakistan, may Allah bless them. This is a noble job. This is a job better than any other job because you do the place where the Prophet steps, the, the, the place where the Sahaba walk. This is the best place. And they come and, and, and they clean and they give them change. They don't give them that ma ma a lot of money because all the money come to Trump. And you know what's happened? This man, people, when you go around the haram, sometimes you have five dollars to give it to the people who are working. They have a special uniform. Sometimes you give them ten real, five real, whatever you have. And once all he gave, he came and he gave somebody and he gave this brother from Bangladesh. And when he gave it to him, he said, no, he said, He said, strange for me because everybody, I want to give him before I took my hand, their hands all the time out. And later on, they said to him, this man have a lot of hotels back there in India and all this continent. He, he's a multi-millionaire. He took all his cars from his pocket. But he said, I came here just to clean the haram during the time of the Hajj, three months. Free for the sake of Allah to clean the bathrooms and to wash and to be around the Kaaba and, 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 and to do to save Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the manners and this is the behavior. Let us inshallah, my dear brothers, let us low, low ourselves to the people, humble ourselves, make people come to the fourth Islam. Let us be in our families with mercy and love and peace. Let us give the da'wah, give the da'wah with manners. Let us not our actions, our, our, our contradicts our ways. We say something, we have to do it. Allahumma Azza al-Islam wa Sallu Muslimin 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 وإذا أنت فروقنا من بعد تفرقا معصوما اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن له حق علينا اللهم عز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم ارزقنا قبل الموت توبة وعند الموت شهادة وبعد الموت جنة ونعيما يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم الحمد لله وأقيموا الصلاة